Now we are going to discuss right bundle branch block with left posterior hemi block. Let us see what are the features on ECG first and there will be a short discussion on the other features of left posterior hemi block with right bundle branch block. This ECG is showing sinus rhythm. You can see P waves that is T and P are almost merging together but you can see the P wave here. This is the P wave and the PR interval is on the upper limit. Almost 200 milliseconds is the PR interval. And at one look you can see that the QRS is wide. So there is a conduction disturbance. You can see that the QRS is almost uh, um, 160 milliseconds over here. Four divisions are there. So it's a wide QRS with the upper limit of normal PR interval, fully in sinus rhythm. Coming back to the pattern here, you can see a small R wave followed by a wide slurred S wave in lead 1. And same pattern can also be seen almost in AVL, but in AVL, that small R wave is very much diminutive. Then in inferior leads, you can see that there is a minimal Q wave here followed by a tall slurred R wave that is in lead 2. Lead 3 also shows a similar pattern. A wave also shows a minimal Q wave followed by a tall R wave. And that is slurred also. Shows the extensive damage to the conduction system in this case. So these features, that is, uh, this is right axis deviation. Negative complexes in lead 1 with uh, positive complexes in AVF will give you a negative, uh, that is a right axis deviation you are seeing here. And uh, that is also a feature of left posterior hemi block, right axis deviation. And in addition, we are seeing the small r deepest complexes in lateral leads and small q tall r pattern in inferior leads. That is all features of left posterior hemi block. Now what are the features of right bundle branch block in this ECG? Look at V1. Even you have a small Q wave followed by a tall slurred R wave. Actually in right bundle branch block you would expect a small initial R wave followed by an S wave and a delayed terminal slurred tall R dash pattern. But here you are not seeing the initial R wave. So what is the reason? It's because this person had a previous anterior wall myocardial infarction. So the anterior wall myocardial infarction has knocked out the initial R wave which you expect in right bundle branch block. That is you are all familiar with the RSR pattern in right bundle branch block. So you don't have the initial R. Actually this is a QRBBB that is initial Q followed by an R wave. It's a QRBBB indicating anterior wall infarction with right bundle branch block. Then the T is inverted in anterior leads that could be either secondary to the right bundle branch block or a manifestation of previous anterior wall myocardial infarction. Now this is a bifascicular block that is right bundle branch block with a block in the posterior fascicle. And the PR interval is almost full. If the PR interval lengthens a little more, it will become trifascicular block very near to a complete art block. And when they develop complete art block, since the fascicles are blocked, the subsidiary focus will be from the lower part of ventricle, which will have a low rate. So if this bifascicular block progresses to trifascicular block and complete art block, the prognosis will be poor and there is every chance of Stokes Adam attacks occurring. Okay. 
This is the schematic diagram of the bundle branch system. AV node is bundle, right bundle and two divisions anterior fascicle and posterior fascicle. Here in this ECG we have seen that there is a right bundle branch block and left posterior hemi block. You can see that the left posterior fascicle is broader than the anterior fascicle. For this reason anterior fascicle is likely to be more affected. You know that left anterior hemi block is much more common than left posterior hemi block. The broader fascicle also has dual blood supply left anterior descending coronary artery and right coronary artery while the anterior fascicle has only a single blood supply from left anterior descending coronary artery. So when the left posterior fascicle is involved that would mean that both these blood supplies are lost that is a dual coronary lesion is most likely when the block is due to myocardial infarction. If it is conduction tissue disease it is different.